know that surprise I've been telling you guys about for a while? Finally here. Oh, and I bought a coffee machine. Took your guys' advice. I just am gonna miss the pit bike rides to get coffee. That was the best part. But we got car parts to buy, way cheaper. So uh, this is one of those things where people get hyped on parts like you know, baller, JDM Aero, or wing, or some super rare seats, or something like that. I'm like, I think that's cool, but I'm more of like the gearhead car nerd mentality, and like this kind of stuff gets me hyped. So we have a full on dry sump setup for the LS Miata. Like, how freaking badass is this? I'm so hyped, I can't even explain it. So, the long and short of it is, if you guys don't know, I blew up my first engine because I had oil starvation issues. <laughs> It could have been numerous things. It could have been that I didn't have it high enough. You're supposed to overfill, but then the crank hits the oil. And there's just kind of like this slew of things that, that you got to deal with and that it could be and etc. So I read the pros and cons. I went back and forth a lot on what to do. And the dry sump seemed out of the question at first because I thought, you know, you could buy a pump and you'd have to make a bracket and you'd have to make a tank or find a tank. And, and it was just going to be this whole custom ordeal, like trying to get the pulley onto the crank and like I, I didn't think that there were any like real kits for it and I thought it would be like a minimum of five grand. So then I found Aviad Oil Systems and they make full on dry sump kits for LSs. They make all sorts of stuff too. Kits start around 2100 bucks. What I have, which is a three stage dry sump, they've got all sorts of stuff from like every level of possible need up to like five stage craziness. So I was like, man, like that's, this is really like pretty affordable compared to what I thought it was. And my alternative was to go with more traditional setup. So this is a wet sump system. You can see the deepness of the pan, right? So your oil sits down in here, wet sump. And then this is your pickup tube and the oil pump sucks it up and sits it through the engine, it drains back to the pan and ideally back into your sump. The problem is under high G-force, the oil goes every which way but the sump most of the time. So that's what the baffles are for. So it seems as though like this pan is just not quite adequate for what I'm doing and I really need a pan with trap doors. So basically it allows oil into the sump but not out of the sump. Uh, but the only pan with trap doors and extended capacity, also ideal, uh, for a Miata is like 900 bucks. And then I'd really want to put an AccuSump on it, which is another 600 bucks. And then I'd want to put an ATI damper on it, since the motors are going to live at high RPMs. And it was like, after adding all the stuff up to like do the oiling system wet, traditionally, it was like almost the same cost to do dry sump. And I figure the cost of engine damage, and not just, you know, okay, spending another 1400 two grand on a motor, but the time, missing out on stuff. I missed out on the race against Tommy because my motor blew up. If I towed my car to California and had an issue, you know, like there's a lot more cost involved than just the motor that you're protecting. So to me, it's cheap insurance and it's badass. Like who doesn't want to dry sump? Like dry sump to freaking sick. The other key component here for me is this is your pan. You can see how it's shallow front to back, right? Obviously this is my wet sump pan. This pan hangs down about this far below my subframe. So it is the lowest point on the car. So if I were to drop a tire on the inside of a rumble strip or anything like that, I have a high probability of cracking the pan. So I ran my car super high, but it's still not, you know, really a guarantee I'm not gonna crack it. And if I crack it halfway across the country, like it's gonna be kind of hard to replace. The motor's gonna come out. So to me, the dry sump just made sense. And again, it, it takes all the cool boxes for me. Like it's kind of stuff gets me hyped. Like C6 E06 is one of my attainable dream cars because it has a dry sump, which after my research isn't even that great of a dry sump, regardless. This is what we got, and I am stoked, man. I'm so stoked. So basically what the components of your dry sump system are, this is your pump, so this is the block mount, so it mounts down to like the passenger side of the block. So it's a scavenge pump, so it pulls the oil that comes down through the engine out, sends it back to the tank, comes from the tank, so this is where all your oil is stored, comes from the tank into the pump, the pump pumps it up into the engine itself, through the engine, back down. So this is a breather tank, that's your main tank. Oil filter relocation, which comes with like everything you need, more sensor input so I can do oil temp and oil pressure and use my stock oil pressure sensor, which is sick. And then the kit comes with an ATI super damper, so this is ideal for keeping your harmonics in check, especially if the engine's gonna be at high RPM. 
So it bolts to this and that's our cog for our belt, which goes to this pulley on the pump. Here's the belt. So that's what spins the pump, which makes the pressure in the scavenge and all that nonsense. This is the damper. ATI super dampers are dope. Um, very, very good upgrade for any like performance car. So like I said, this is something I'd want to do either way and it comes with the kit. They even include a freaking oil filter, which is awesome. But really, really well organized product. I, I like really appreciated the way they did everything. Like they've got the bolts in a bag for the pan, zip tied to the pan. They've got these little braces zip tied to the pan. Like everything is where it needs to be and it's very easy to figure out like what is for what. With clear instructions and everything. And I feel like that's honestly lacking a lot in, in products today. So anytime I see that, like I, I respect it because it's a lot more work to package something like that and think it out and kind of get everything in a good spot as opposed to just trying to get it in the smallest package possible. So anyway, I, a long winded explanation over I'm just, Oh man, I just, the idea that I'm gonna have my own dry sump is just so cool to me. I'm just so excited. Freaking dry sump LS Miata, like, ah, okay. So, we've got two big question marks on this that we need to figure out. So one, the pan itself. So it's like an inch and three quarters stick all the way front to back. This one is a little thinner at the front, um, but our, our clearance issue is where the steering rack is, and I think about where the steering rack is, it's the same. So what we need to do is get this pan on our engine, put it in the subframe, and make sure it clears. Because if it doesn't clear, we're pretty much SOL. So we need to figure that out first and foremost. The other thing we need to figure out is not only where to put this massive tank, but if this massive tank will even fit. Because they have a bunch of different size tanks. I wanted to try the biggest one, see if I could fit it. If not, uh, we'll have to move to a smaller tank, which isn't a huge deal. We just lose a little bit of uh, oil volume, but that's okay. So let's do that first. That'll be the easiest thing. Uh, so I'm thinking engine bay <laughs> is out of the question. Unless we replace the engine with it. The thought about behind the seats, like mounted to the roll bar, but obviously you don't want hot oil in the passenger compartment. It would be hard to get to the fill. I think I've kind of settled on in the trunk, which it's just barely too tall for. So basically mount this here, except obviously a, a shorter version of it. And then we'll you know build like a plate to mount it and then mount the breather here. And then we should only have two lines that we have to run all the way up to the front. So it really won't be that bad. That was one of my concerns was plumbing. Um, but once I started looking at how everything goes together, it's, it's only two lines, which like that you have to run to the tank, which really isn't bad at all. Obviously it would be ideal to have it in the engine bay, but uh, you know, unfortunately <laughs> we're, in a, we're, we're not in a position to do that in such a small car with such a big engine. So next step, the block. So from the factory, you have a windage tray that bolts on here, keeps oil from splashing up into the crank. It bolts onto these studs. So we don't need that because it's a dry sump. There's not really much oil to splash up in there. So we need to cut these studs off because our pan is super low clearance, which is what we need. But we need to cut these studs off, test fit the pan, um, and then get it on the subframe. Nervous about this because I really want this to work. I don't want to find out that we can't use it because I'm I'm already so accustomed to the idea of having a sick dry sump in my car. I can't not, can't not work out. Keep your fingers crossed for me. Let's see what we can do. pan on now that we have those studs cut off. Fits nice and snug. Put the motor mounts back on. So me and Ben are gonna lift the engine, put it in the subframe. I did measure the other pan uh, and the subframe should be like right around the second bolt. And on that other pan, it's the same thickness at the spot where the steering rack is. Hopefully we're good. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But that's why we're testing because we gotta make sure. Hey, 
It's literally, honestly, a better fitment than the previous pan. You can see daylight through there. Just barely touches at the top. And then over here, you can see that line just misses it. I mean, it fits pretty much as good as it can get. And then if you look down here, the ground is, the ground's about an inch from the ground. So we got, take an inch out, and we've got all that room to with the bottom of the pan. So there's basically no chance of damaging the pan which is awesome. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is test fit the pump. So make sure it fits with the engine mounts and all that stuff, because that's another important thing that we need to know. So obviously this is our pump, it mounts like this. Um, and then there's this bracket here. So this bracket bolts on and gives you your second bottom bolt. Top bolt is in the engine. Oh God, this bolts to two bolts and then has the bolt for you. And that's how the pump mounts. Clears all our nonsense. Not too bad, not too bad. My block definitely needs the threads cleaned out. Those bolts are kind of boogery going in. But check it out. Dry sump. Baller. Oh, this shit gets me so hyped. Oh, it's kind of cool. You can look down right into the pan. Look at that. Would you just look at that? All right, well, we hit a pretty big hitch in the plan. Let me get a light so I can show you guys. Neither of the bolts going into the block wanted to go in, so I didn't put the second one in. So then I tried to do it without the bracket on, and I guess there was enough dirt in there when I started tightening it down with the ratchet, it just uh, broke the block. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it looks like the threads were already trashed. That's why I didn't want to go in it. Cracked the block pretty bad, so. Yeah, that's no, that's no good. So I think that changes our, our plan skis a little bit. I think we are going to run with this engine now. <laughs> good thing I hadn't returned it yet. Uh, you guys did make a lot of good points in the comments when I did the leak down test on this engine. I mean, I did know that it's obviously gonna have lower numbers because it's gonna be grime and, and build up and stuff. My thoughts were just, if I'm gonna take the time to take the heads off and tear them apart and do all that, might as well just rebuild my old engine, put the $1,400 I spent on this motor into that and have the same, if not better, of an engine freshly rebuilt. The only problem with that is time, uh, but now with that issue, pretty much screwed, honestly. So um, yeah, I, I think we'll order some head gaskets, pull the heads off this engine, wipe the valves, throw the springs in, new head gaskets, put it back together. Um, and let her ride, put some new lifters in it too, just to be on the safe side, send it, you know? I guess that's kind of our best option really at this point. And I, you know, as much as like, it's kind of a bummer because I was excited to have a rebuilt motor, I was also like, man, this is gonna take a while. And I really don't want this thing to be down for another month. So with this situation, if we rush ship the head gaskets, we could probably knock this thing out in, uh, I don't know, a week or so. Maybe be ready to put the motor back in or less, depending. Uh, so on the bright side, a good thing just hopefully we uh don't hate what we find when we pull the uh pull the heads off that's gonna be the real kicker so yeah okay back to dry sump stuff figure out they made a good point something i thought about but i wasn't sure if i wanted to do it could cut this rear spare tire well out which would give us room for this we're gonna run the lines under anyway um yeah and you know try to seal it back up somehow basically just like drop it down a couple inches i don't know i don't know uh, but I want to get under there and look underneath and see kind of what our options are. There's a drain at the bottom, so I want to figure out kind of a solution for that. Either way, even if we go with a shorter tank, you know, we're not going to be able to get a drain pan in here. So I want to kind of figure out like some sort of hole, with like a funnel system or something for draining the oil out when the time comes. So yeah, that is the next order of business. Okay, so there's not a lot of room down here to run the lines because the pump is on this side, so this is where the lines would ideally need to come in, but this is where our fuel lines come in, uh, which is already hard enough to keep them far enough away from the exhaust for comfort. So to do two more with lines in dash 12 instead of eight, um, or six, this is six. So to do two double the size lines, I don't know. It's kinda, kinda gonna be tough. I mean, it's definitely doable just not really ideal. It's seeming like the best option is gonna be to run them through the inside, uh, run them down like in the passenger side, the door sill area, 
because um, then they'll pop out in the engine bay. We can loop them around the expansion tank and right down to the pump. So I, I don't know. I gotta look look at it more. But I mean, either way, we're gonna be similar length. Lots of up, down, around, and all the way from front to back. So that gives me enough information to start ordering lines and fittings. So we have those. So I ordered head gaskets, lapping compound, valve lapping tool. Uh, so we can do all that. Um, is there anything else we need? I guess we need valve seals. I gotta order those. I need to do valve seals as well. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Well, I guess there's not a whole lot more we can do today, guys. Time to spend the money and order stuff. We got lots to order. We need to order lines and fittings. I just added a bunch of stuff to our list. Oil temp gauge, fuel level gauge, LS7 lifters, hardened push rods, a few other engine things. Pretty much it. We've pretty much ordered everything else that we need. So I am gonna get back to ordering stuff and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. We'll have plenty more work to do. Uh, maybe start stripping that thing down. So I'm excited we're at least making progress now that we're gonna use that engine. The, the goal, the end goal, the finish line is a lot closer than it was before. So that's exciting. Let me know what you guys think of it. Give this video a thumbs up. If you're excited that this thing's gonna be back on the track slash road sooner than we thought. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye guys.